what's up? We're gonna go try to do some pig hunting up on the Malibu. Got a pretty late start today already. Didn't get going very quick. Forgot a hat. Had to go back get the hat. So if I don't have a hat on, I'll get sunburned pretty quick up there. Hair's too long to really rub in much sunscreen, but too short to offer any protection from the sun. So I gotta have a hat on. Gives a little bit of blaze orange too, so you can see where I'm at. Easy to find. I'm gonna take the rifle up today. I almost brought my bow, but I just don't quite feel comfortable using the bow to hunt quite yet. And I also wanna to try to film parts of this hunt today and make an episode uh, from the footage. So I figured it would be a little bit easier to use the rifle but the first time we try to film and make you know just minor changes from what I've hunted in the past instead of introducing both a new method of take being the bow and also trying to film the hunt live so um, we'll give it a shot today driving up it's about 10 after 7 right now, so can we didn't get very early start, but hopefully we get up there, get, get parked, and start glassing up some either pigs or goats, or maybe some sheep. Probably, probably more likely to see sheep up there than we'll see goats, but who knows what we'll find. Um, them. So, we just got out here probably only about 20 yards from the car. I like to post up and start glassing to make sure any areas we're gonna walk, we're not gonna blow out any game. Um, so right now I'm, I'm checking out this hillside uh, that we're gonna be walking towards here in a little bit, just to make sure we're not gonna walk on top of anything. Um, and also just seeing if there's any anything around the road might be pretty easy to get to and get a shot on. Nothing yet. Uh, it's, I'm hoping we're not like too late and they've already kind of started going around. It's like 10 after eight already, we got like a super late start. So, you know, we'll just have to see what the day brings. Pigs might like to hang out. A lot of times they feed up underneath trees and brush up uh, close to the, the base of the trees. There's a lot of green grass and there's moisture down there. Obviously there's not a whole lot of standing water around. <laughs> it's pretty dry up here unless it rains. So they got to get their moisture from plant sources. And so pick a spot and kind of just work my way across and down a little bit and systematically work through the side of a hill. And when doing so, I'll pause at trees and spend a little bit of time searching in that area, looking for movement, not necessarily a pig or an animal per se, but looking for any sort of movement. A lot of times with these pigs, they look like lava rocks from distance. So you might move over them very quickly. And if you're not careful, you'll miss three or four of them with their heads down, eating, and they move real slow. Um, sometimes you'll see them flick their tail and that'll be their giveaway. Then once you see them, you can kind of start recognizing more of them once your mind kind of understands the sight picture you're looking for. Oftentimes, hunters will set off in search of game, not knowing that the animals they are looking for are only yards from their present location. I've made this mistake before and have learned the hard way that it's best to spend some time looking over the train you plan to travel through to avoid making this time of mistake. If one animal busts you, you can be sure that he will be telling his friends as he hightails it into the thick brush and miles away from you. 
Since we hadn't spotted any pigs or sheep along the path to our chosen glassing knob, we headed off in search of an elevated position to keep up the search. However, even though we were on our way to a specific objective, we took time to pause, look, and listen for animal sign. You never know what may be hiding around the next corner underneath that tree that you missed while using your binoculars. So sometimes we go around this hill here and there's pigs hanging out on the other side. I didn't see any when I was at an elevated position glassing over towards that way, but um, we've come around it a little bit willy-nilly before to sit on the hill to glass and there's been pigs on the other side and they wind you and they bail. So we're gonna sort of creep around the side here and uh, take it slow. Last time we did this, there was, uh, there was we got in position, got a pig around the side of this hill. So we'll, uh, we'll see what's cracking on the other side. In the past, I've made the mistake of quickly topping out on this hill and silhouetting myself along the horizon. Movement like this on top of a hill will quickly give your position away, so it's best to creep over the side of the terrain feature until you can verify that no animals will spot your location. Once we get near the top, I like to settle in against certain taller features like a rock or a tree to keep myself concealed. I also prefer a tripod when using binoculars. This was a hot tip I picked up from watching folks like Randy Newberg and Remy Warren on their big mountain hunts. I used to handhold my binos, but once I saw just how much better you could see when using a tripod, I made the call to always have one with me on spot and stock hunts. Give it a try on your next hunt. You won't be sorry. Nothing's going on. It's been pretty quiet. Um, been out here about two hours ago. We walked away from the car. Um, saw some quail. A couple coveys of quail, which is good news for bird season, which is coming up. But it's, yeah, it's pretty quiet. There's been a three day weekend here, so it was uh, state day on Friday for state of Hawaii. So uh, we're coming at the tail end of a three day holiday. And other people come up here, well, shoot recreationally as well. We've come up here with people who've been doing that and there's nothing going on as well. So, couple things in play there. Also, we were late getting up here, but usually we can still glass up some stuff. This area is pretty cool because you'll see like a wide variety of game. Um, you usually see like wild turkey up here, which is pretty cool. Saw some tr tracks, what appeared to be some turkey tracks this morning. <clears throat> but no wild turkey today. Just when you think you can start counting on a spot to yield some game, <laughs> you get skunked. I don't know, I'm not saying we're done yet. Pretty slow compared to what we've had in the past. But it's like, that's not how it is, like elk hunting. Like just sit with like days, glassing different spots. And then all of a sudden there's elk there. So you get these big lows, big troughs of like, oh, I'm never gonna see an animal ever again. And then you look over and there's like five elk sitting on the side of a hill. That's how it is for like late season after the rut. They just like don't play ball very well. They're hard to find, they like dissipate. They're not calling each other. Bulls aren't all rumbly, rumbly, trying to get it on. So they hole up. And so yeah, you can go.
go your whole season without seeing any animals. These bags aren't exactly hunter friendly. <laughs> Tell we're not being super quiet right now. Unfortunately, we didn't have the luxury of time on this hunt. At the time of filming, the University of Hawaii started class the next day, and since I'm an assistant professor at that institution, I was due to start my semester of classes in the morning. Thankfully, we don't live too far from this beautiful hunting unit, so we can easily pop up to our public lands to have another go at keeping the freezer stocked. Just the way it goes. That's hunting for you, man. Just wasn't going on today. We've been lazy getting out here. Didn't get out of bed till five. Set the alarm for five. Didn't have everything ready to go. I had to go back into town to get gas. So, there we go. For me, whether I'm successful or not, hunting is always a humbling experience. Just because I put on a few successful stocks in this very spot, it doesn't mean I'll be able to do it again. It leaves me wondering if I've just gotten lucky a few times. I guess to find out, I'll just have to keep trying. I just wanted to let everybody know we're getting closer to that first mile mark on our subscriber giveaway, right? So a few episodes back, I said that once we got to 100, we'd be doing a subscriber giveaway. We're sitting around 60 uh, as of this morning, so we're you know, 60% of the way to the first milestone of 100. Once we get to 100, I'll do a giveaway to one of our subscribers uh, that's also commented on a video. So if you're interested in getting in on that awesome giveaway, you gotta leave a comment on the video. Tell us what you like, what you wanna see in future videos, whether you like the hunting or the fishing more. Uh, I've also got some pretty rad news. I'm gonna be sharing with y'all soon um, so it should allow us to produce some even better content and looking forward to generating some some cooler videos for y'all in the future so keep sharing this channel and we'll keep growing this community and i appreciate you guys support